cool. Oh, I knew. Uh, well, it was going to be something. Not today. Let's try and see if I can wreck this one. Different tool. Nice and easy. <laughs> Lone Star. Lone Star! Should've had my finger on the top. Should've had my finger on the top. Safety's on. The colored clay is hard because it's all different consistencies when I threw it. So I didn't have a lot of time. Well, I'm learning. I'm learning. So note to self, when using colored clay, when you mix it up, let it acclimate for a few days. So it's all the same viscosity, all the same softness. And then maybe when you throw it, it won't be such pain in the padded butt. I haven't done much colored clay work, so I was learning. To the top of the mountain! Yeah, butters. I'm looking at you, yeah. Butters, we're not going out yet. It'll never yeah. happen any other way! You stuff your sorries in a sack, mister. Oh, you can stuff your sorries in a sack, mister! So I think a big thing is mixing up the color in the clay, the mason stain, the powder, whatever it is you're going to use. And then again, after you knead it, let it sit together for a while in baggies for a day or two. For four! For a day or two. Just so it's not such a pain to throw. Meaning when I say that is there's hard chunks and there's soft chunks. So a lot of these trimmings, they look a little bit off kilter and that's because they are. Because throwing them, when they have that many different hard and soft areas, it's difficult to throw evenly. At least for me. I also told a lot of students when I taught no one to stop and right now I'm disregarding that because it's like I don't like that I'm gonna do it again hopefully I don't punch through the bottom since I've already wrecked one so it's just a little quick tip on trimming colored clay using mason stains and all that good stuff and I just take a little water on the rim soften it and then I think this will get a clear with maybe a color just on the rim and it'll drip down not sure yet still thinking about it so there you are